A call for unity at the Democratic National Convention with Hillary Clinton's former opponent, Bernie Sanders, urging his supporters to back the party's presumptive nominee. It is no secret that Hillary Clinton and I disagree on a number of issues. That is what this campaign has been about. That is what democracy is about. But I'm happy to tell you that at the Democratic Platform Committee, there was a significant coming together between the two campaigns, and we produced by far the most progressive platform in the history of the Democratic Party. Sanders delivering the primetime speech during the first night of the convention in Philadelphia, where Sanders supporters, in some part, booed at just the mention of Clinton's name. Donald Trump even getting in on the action himself. He was live tweeting during Bernie Sanders totally sold out to crooked Hillary Clinton. All of that work, energy, and money, and nothing to show for it. Waste of time. Sanders responded, writing simply, never tweet. Also taking on Trump, Michelle Obama, the current first lady, delivering a powerful speech that took aim at the Republican nominee's tagline, Make America Great Again. When you have the nuclear codes at your fingertips and the military in your command, you can't make snap decisions. You, you can't have a thin skin or a tendency to lash out. You need to be steady. Don't let anyone ever tell you that this country isn't great. That somehow we need to make it great again. Because this right now is the greatest country on earth. On tap today at the convention, the roll call vote that will be held to officially nominate Clinton as the Democratic nominee. As for high profile speakers, former President Bill Clinton will be also hitting the stage later today. There are a number of Americans living here in Canada, many who still are able to vote in the U.S. election. Gabriel uh, Elias with the Democrats Abroad Canada. We had the RNC on last, uh, last week, so Democrats this week. Uh, and, and well, let's talk about, first of all, last night's convention. It, during the day, there was, still, there was a lot of people wondering, are they going to be able to hold the unity message intact? But I think by the time that Michelle Obama and Bernie Sanders spoke yesterday, I think the message was pretty clear. The Democrats want to come out of this looking unified. It's not a question of looking unified. I would say that they are unified. I mean, you watched Bernie Sanders' speech last night, and this is what a mensch looks like. He's come out there and he said, we need to support Hillary Clinton, not just because we want to stop Donald Trump, but because we have a vision for what America is going to look like down the road. Donald Trump's campaign has been very much about this regressive reactionary uh, this regressive reactionary view of some false nostalgia of what America was. But now we're talking about what actually America needs to be to move us through the next century. It's, uh, it's interesting, the situation that you're in right now. You were actually a Bernie Sanders supporter, campaigned uh, vehemently for him here on this side of the border. And a lot of people are wondering, well, why are Americans campaigning on this side of the border? There are a number of Americans who have the ability to vote living here, some who may not exercise that ability. Absolutely. We know voter turnout is always poor in every single election right now. We've got about 17,000 members in Canada that we know of, but we think that there might be as many as 1 million Americans living abroad, not necessarily just in Canada, but also in Mexico. Mexico. And if we can get them all to vote, especially in states that are uh, flippable, for example, Philadelphia, Florida, uh, that's gonna, that can make a big difference, especially in a tight campaign. And especially because a lot of the states that are going to, to, to make the decision when it comes down to it are very close to our borders, Michigan, Ohio, through parts of the, the so-called Rust Belt, uh, are very close to uh, and, and near and dear to Canada and as well to our economy. Absolutely. One thing we know for sure about this campaign is that the conventional uh, election map, election map isn't, isn't conventional right now. And so we cannot afford to take any chances. We need to get every single vote that we possibly can, no matter where they are. No stone unturned. So the, the message you want to get to Americans living here in Canada who may just sort of say, you know what, I'm, I'm not even going to bother voting. Uh, you want to change their minds. Yes, please, please vote. It make it very simple for you. We have a tool, votefromabroad.org. It takes about five minutes. We don't want to, we also, aren't just wanting to talk to Americans. We know we're living in Canada. This is a great country. But we also want to tell Canadians, go tell your American friends to vote. Do you, do you think uh, that living among Canadians, and we, we, we tend to align ourselves, I think, more with the Democratic platforms than we do the Republican side. Do you think that has, a, has much of an influence on Americans living here, living 
immersed in, with Canadians? Absolutely. Well, Canada's a great country to live in. Healthcare, uh, education. It's a social democratic country. Better, better beer. Just pointing that out. For sure. Just pointing that out. Uh, sorry. Uh, so, so the message once again is exercise that. It's not that really that difficult. Uh, how do you vote in Canada? as an American? Well, you go to votefromabroad.org. We have um, a tool there that will help you to register within your old state that you last lived in. You need a social, you need, you need your social security number for the U.S. or a passport number. And then basically we'll mail, we'll help you mail your absentee ballot to you. You fill that out, you mail it back, and boom, you've exercised your democratic rights. All right, thank you very much. Gabriel Elias with the Democrats Abroad Canada for being here.